Hey, what's going on, guys? Indy Pride here with Milk and Cookies Total War, and I've got a guest commentator with me today. Hello, I am Achilles, and I'm the guest commentator. <laughs> and we're going to be doing my first Napoleon Total War replay commentary. I just bought this on the Humble Bundle Steam Sale, or I guess it wasn't a Steam Sale. It was a Humble Bundle Sale a couple days ago, or I guess about a week ago, and Napoleon was $3, so I thought that would probably be worth the investment. I don't know how many or how often I'll be doing Napoleon commentaries, but I have been playing a decent amount with Achilles, and Achilles is very experienced on this game, has a lot of wins, a lot of knowledge about Napoleon Total War in general, so I'm going to kind of just be bouncing questions and ideas off of him as we go through this replay, and we're just kind of, kind of going to discuss. I'm sure some of you have much more knowledge of Napoleon than I do, so if that's the case, this was a really good battle regardless, so I think you'll be uh, interested in watching anyway. But we're going to press play on the replay right now. 3, 2, 1, press play. And get into it. So, in this replay, I am Russia. I brought three Russian Jaegers, three lifeguard foot, and a bunch of musketeers, maybe four or five musketeers, and then some Ulans and cuirassiers. What's your army setup? I have three chasseurs de cheval. Um, those are shooter cap. I have two of these uh, chevaux, uh, chevaux légers lancers, just uh, regular lancers. I have four of four of these chasseurs, which can be considered as light foot. I have four Swiss foot, one fusilier of the line, a three star ge no a normal general staff, and three old guards. Those are uh, the beasts. And for Great Britain, he has a bunch of light foot up front, and a bunch of foot guards and foot in the back here, just basically line spam as you're kind of expected to do with Britain, from what I understand. And then some Dragoons over on his left flank. And we're also going to be facing against Prussia. Do you want to go over his army setup real quick? He has five Silesian Schutzen. Then he has, what I can see at the bottom, three Musketeers, four Musketeers. He has a normal general staff, three other Musketeers, and a foot guard running up the hill. And for his calf contingent, we have three Curacier units and a Brandenburg Ulan, which is a DLC unit. So, the strategy on this map, this is Savoy Hilltop, from what I understand, what you want to do here, or at least our, the strategy we're going to be employing in this battle, is we're going to quickly rush the hill and try to kind of overpower Britain before Prussia can get here. He took a very interesting route. I don't think this is something that people normally do on Savoy Hilltop. He's going to actually go through the valley at the bottom of the map here and go through the forest and come up behind us, and they're going to try to pincer us. But the problem with this, from what I can tell, is that it seems like it's going to take a very long time for him to get all the way around and he actually is sending his cavalry to help out Great Britain but that means he's going to be kind of isolated from each other for a while here yes exactly uh, this is this isn't a normally like this is not a thing you should normally do it is very exhausting but it is a valid strategy for example if Britain gains the upper hand here he can hold for long because Britain is a defensive based faction they have uh, the best infantry uh, to shoot with uh, yeah. So, I mean, Britain can hold for a, for a pretty long time in this game. Yeah, and he is, he is backed up by a bunch of the Prussian Cavs, so he has some Cuirassiers and some Ulans. They have some pretty decent cavalry. And what we're going to try to do here, as uh, France moves up into the uh, line of fire, some of these burns, he's going to do some skirmishing in the front here, just try to get some shots off while I run up and try to back him up. But I already have my cavalry up here backing him up, and we're going to try to get up higher on this ridge and then charge down and try to take out their cavalry contingent because once we wipe out their mobility we think that it'll be pretty easy to uh, take out Great Britain as the uh, skirmishing starts here in the middle. Exactly. So what was your strategy going into this, uh, this shooter fight? I don't know how to say shooter fight I guess is the name. This uh, skirmish fight I guess. Um, first of all I, s I noticed that his troops were in, in a very spread formation. So that he is going to have deeper lines and he's going to be more mobile but I have so much firepower and he's not going to hurt my lines because my lights are in front and in light mode so I think I could take the engagement with uh, the British firepower right here and so I did and he pulled back which was my uh, intention now the thing like the only problem we have now is that the little ridge if you zoom in uh, in front of the foot guards and yeah, the foot I it's blocking line of sight. Yeah, so he's firing at will directly into the hill, and he's not actually yes. hitting anything. Yes, and he's wasting ammunition as well. Yeah, this was a problem for him. It's something that was kind of... It's definitely harder for me to get used to, 
Um, and actually, it looks like some of the Prussian cab charged me. I got some of my uh, Russian Mysteteers into square formation, and I'm going to be able to kill off a lot of this cab. I had a really good line of sight here to kill off this cab, so I don't think this is a great charge from him. He's basically just going to get shot down by a bunch of my Musketeers in the back, and he is going to move up his Skirmishers as I go into square formation, so I was a little slow here. Some of my guys stay in square for too long, and he's going to be able to move up and get some shots into my line. Yes, and, and now the uh, cav engagement is starting as oh, well on top. Yeah, and the cav engagement has started. We've sent our cavalry down the hill. That's it. Wow. <laughs> I'm not going to get a, a, as much of a close up there. Yeah, so my Russian cavalry, the Hussars and the Kurasiers, are going to go into these dragoons. And we do have the cavalry advantage here, I think. We have. Um, they have dragoons and Kurasiers, which are like heavy melee cav. They are. Uh, they're not really. Our general is under attack. I wouldn't say that Lancers uh, do have the advantage in a long in a long fight, but we have the numbers. They are blobs. So we're getting good charges on all the angles, and we mostly. Well, I decided to take the fight because we have infantry support there. You can see my Swiss foot over there. Yes. And you can see that I have a uh, chasseurs de cheval shooting in their back, and that you're also going to attack them in their back. So we could isolate these cav and we can destroy them, uh, just because of these three factors, basically. Yeah, and this was probably the most important engagement of the match so far anyway. Like, killing all of this cavalry, all these dragoons, is going to be a really big deal. I was able to flank some of my Ulans, which are... They're Lancer Cav, correct? They're just like yes. light Lancer Cav, yeah. I flanked them around and got a rear charge off on this the blob right here. And then, yeah, with these Swiss feet... Or Swiss foot... <laughs> Swiss feet. <laughs> and Chasseurs uh, Chevelle, uh, we're going to be able to get some shots off into the rear of this blob of dragoons. And even though it's going to be a long melee fight, we feel like we can probably take this engagement. Yes. So yeah, like, like we were talking about Great Britain with his skirmish fight, and one thing that was kind of hard for me to get used to when I started playing Napoleon, and again, I've only played maybe 10 or so games so far, but making sure that you have line of sight the if you have fire will on is super important. Now, making sure you have line of sight anyway is important, but like, they will shoot into hilltops and into the ground and everything if you don't actually have them if you don't have fire will off. So you have to make sure that you actually have line of sight if you're gonna have fire will off. Exactly. And it's a valid, like, it is a tactic that is used in uh, in the games with the more advanced players of this game. That basically you try to run a unit in a position where the enemy will fire its first shot into uh, the terrain and then you move up to get your first shot on his troops. It's, it's, it's common use, basically. So over on my side, uh, Prussia has finally caught up Our and he has a bunch of his Jaegers and a bunch of his line infantry moving up. I really didn't have, I have a really good position on the hilltop, which is nice, but finding line of sight on some of these hills was actually really difficult for me. I kept trying to zoom down and find if I actually had line of sight or not. One thing I tried to do here, and it's, it's actually something I've noticed in many Total War games, is when there are cliffs, you can't usually can't move directly to the edge of the cliff and get your guys lined up there. So, even though I felt like I had a really good line of sight here, and I actually, um, of course, it's like it's kind of difficult to move your guys directly onto the edge of a cliff and shoot down. So, I was able to do that with this musketeer right here, and I'm gonna get some good shots. But I realized I was not gonna win the skirmish fight. He's just crushing me in this line battle. So I'm gonna pull back and get behind this ridge so he can't shoot me. So we can focus on the cavalry fight on the other side. Yes. And their cav basically routed, uh, except for the Dragoon and the Prussian Kurdishir, which are both about to rout. And then you can see um, I've gone into melee with with my Swiss foot against these foot guards. Normally foot guards from Britain, like any foot guard of elite unit, is pretty good in melee. But the Swiss foot, they can take a charge and they're charging downhill. And they're supporting me very well with your Kurdishir, uh, which is basically going to have a huge blow in their morale. So that's basically two foot guards he's gonna waste there. And my cavalry's made a huge impact on this battle, honestly. They were able to take out all of his dragoons with the help of the Swiss foot, and I was able to get into these foot guards here. So I managed to pull these guys out, and I believe I'm gonna try to flank them around and get into the back of Great Britain's line over here. I noticed some of your uh, Lancers have already gotten into the back of the light foot back here, and Britain's in shambles at this point. He's completely surrounded and kind of cut yes. off from his ally. Exactly, and that's exactly what you want in a team fight. You want a holding force, and you basically want to team up the on the other player. 
And Britain did not protect his uh, lights, so why not get a charge on them? They can't square up. They they don't have good melee stats. Uh, it's it are just free kills, and the light foot are very dangerous units against any infantry unit. So what you've know what you'll notice here is I've pulled back directly behind this ridge where Prussia is not going to have any line of sight to shoot me. As you notice here, I am shooting with my Jaegers. I guess I didn't turn fire well off. And they don't have a line of sight, so that was bad on my part, but from my understanding is that Russia, a lot of the times they have really, or they do have really good line infantry for melee combat, and yes. so what I'm going to do here is after I pull behind this ridge, and of course some of them have already shot some followers into the Prussian line, I'm going to do a full-on bayonet charge, and he's not going to have good line of sight because of where his men are positioned. Of course they are going to get some volleys off when I get directly in front of him, and that's going to hurt. But all of my musketeers are just going to go directly into melee combat, and a lot of his guys don't have great line of sight. So, full on bayonet charge here, backed up by some of my cavalry and some of your cav and the prisoners of the line. And we're just going to go straight into melee right here and see how this goes. The thing with uh, the musketeers is that they do have a great charge, but they're not that good for uh, the melee. It is more of the Russian elites that, uh, that are a beast in melee. Yeah. The uh, lifeguard foot, which I actually haven't committed yes. into melee yet, but I believe on my left flank I will do so soon. Yes. He does have good line of sight here with his Jaegers, and then get some shots into my Swiss foot. Yes, but I have that foot. backed up uh, because I'm going to charge a Lancer into yeah, you that. you got your Lancers directly into the Jaegers, and they went absolutely... <laughs> they got destroyed. And you're going to just pull through right here, not in a bad way, not in an interrogatory way. Just pull through the Jaegers here and get directly into the back of another one of his line units. Yes. And with our cavalry advantage, we were able to completely destroy their cav, and now we have mobility all over the battlefield. And we're exactly. Get our cav into his Silesian Schwitzen, is that how you say it? Silesian Schwitzen. Okay. <laughs> and those are just skirmishers, I believe, with 125 range. Yes. And they'll exactly. get absolutely raped by cuirassiers in the combat. Yes, they are no match for cuirassiers. So as soon as we break these skirmishers on his right flank, we're going to pull in from behind, and the bayonet charge has actually worked really well. A bunch of his line is already routed. Exactly. And you got some of your lancers in behind as well, took out his general, and it's yep. going to be a big old hammer and anvil, which you've seen before. <laughs> Shogun 2 style. Yeah. A couple things, I'm not sure how the game audio is, and I might end up watching this recording, and I might be too loud. So my apologies if that's true. I'll, I'm also using Fraps right now, which I haven't used in months. I've been using Shadow Play. So during the recording, it looked like there were a couple of frame so I apologize if that happened. I don't know if it actually came through in the recording or if it just turned my computer. We'll see when I want to start recording. So if it if that did happen, my apologies, but I did my best. <laughs> I think it will be no problem because when I record the volume of Fraps. I do have some drops as well, but you don't see it in the recording. Yeah. So yeah, my cuirassiers got around the flank, killed his skirmishers, and got into his musketeers. Again, should have no problem killing his musketeers. They didn't exactly. actually have the opportunity to square up. So, gonna get through them, get into the back of these other musketeers, and at this point we've just taken the battlefield. They don't have much left. Yes, and a bit of overconfidence right here. I'm just charging my general staff, my most important unit, into the foot that uh, came back. But it should be no problem killing it. I missed it. I, don't actually, I didn't actually see where you did that. It's uh, it's in the valley. Looks like the uh, British general is actually going to come back from routing, and I believe the end of this replay is going to be your cheval lancers going into Major General Picton. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually my general that will uh, kill it. Yeah. We're just getting some shots off here on the few units that haven't routed. But we've taken the field at this point, and there's really no way we can lose. So this was actually my fourth or fifth battle. It was really interesting. I liked I liked this map a lot. It Just just the beginning of the battle, how you had to shift all guys to one side and try and take the hill, I thought that was a very interesting beginning to the fight. And then making sure that you had line of sight was very difficult, but something that I managed to do, I think, pretty well. I certainly lost the line engagement very easily. I don't think I would have been in Prussia on that. But I pulled back and got a nice charge off with my musketeers. And exactly. It worked out pretty well. It did. 
Your general's gonna kill Major General Picton. Yes, my general is gonna do that. Is that a three-star general or the? No, I have a normal general. This is the only faction I use a normal general with, because I have three old guards. Those uh, provide enough morale. And I ha haven't actually used uh, the old guards, the most expensive units in the game. Got a really good charge off there. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. And we win. So, again, I don't really have any experience commentating we Napoleon, so it's going to be a, a, something I just work on and practice. I have played now like maybe 10 or 12 games on Napoleon. It's been actually a lot of fun. A lot of different tactics you can employ, and Achilles has been teaching me something, so I'm getting better. And if you, you guys thought this was something you might enjoy watching in the future, definitely let me know. If you hate Napoleon, also let me know. I, I'm not going to make this... I don't think I'm going to make it like a staple of the channel where I'm uploading anywhere near as much as Rome 2 or anything like that, but occasionally I think I will bust out a Napoleon replay because I am enjoying the game at the moment. If we look at stats here, Achilles, of course, carried. Almost a 2-1 to <laughs> one KD. I had 1,000 kills and 876 losses. And uh, Banjo Lord and Super, which are two of Achilles' friends, were both four stars, actually. Four star generals, and they did okay, but I think we just outplayed them in every facet of the game, honestly. Yes. Yes, we did. Unit statistics, I believe this is just, yeah, this is just for my army. Yes. My Kerasiers absolutely destroyed 182 kills, 16 losses, and 128 kills. Damn it! What? My Chasseur is a Cheval, uh killed 165 <laughs> so my cavalry was obviously the reason we won this game <laughs> yes of course no doubt and lifeguard foot did okay none of my line infantry honestly did that well just because I, I didn't manage them very well in the skirmish fight like I had one thing in this game is that if you have the height advantage you're usually just gonna crush the line engagement from what I can tell I believe that's true just cuz like the cone of fire is so that if you're above them you have more opportunity to shoot over their head and hit units behind. And stuff basically, like that. basically yes, but there are some ways uh, to counter it. But I will not go uh, into that right now. Okay. Well, I felt like I had the dominant position, but I maybe I just mismanaged my my skirmish line, or maybe they just had too many line units for me to deal with it. But I pulled back, waited to get better line of sight, so or worst line of sight, rather, so that he couldn't shoot into my line as I charged with my bayonets, and we caused a mass rout, and it was a lot of fun. Exactly. So, I guess I will talk to you all later. Hope you guys enjoyed. Achilles, anything else you want to say? Um, no, not really. Okay. Thanks for uh, having me here. Alright, then peace out, boys and girls. I'll talk to you later.